circle be unbroken. If I have wounded some poor soul today, if I have caused one foot to go astray, if I have walked in my own sinful way, dear Lord, forgive. If I have uttered idle words in vain, if I have turned Aside from want or pain, lest I offend some other through the strain, dear Lord, forgive if I have been perverse or hard or cold. If I have longed for shelter in the fold, when thou hast given song for Lord to hold, dear Lord, forgive, forgive the sin. I have confessed to thee, forgive the secret sins I do not see. Guide me, love me, and my keeper be, dear Lord, forgive. Does God send rainbow? They chase the clouds away. They bring along the sunshine to brighten up the day. We can be like rainbows when others need a friend by sharing with them God's love that never ever ends red and orange and yellow green and purple and blue 
like the colors of the rainbow Together we're beautiful too Why does God send rainbows? They chase the clouds away They bring along the sunshine To brighten up the day We can be like rainbows When others need a friend By sharing with them God's love That never ever Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship at Zion Lutheran. We're happy to have you here sharing on uh, this uh, weekend in which we uh, remember and Memorial Day weekend. Uh, also uh, the week, the last week of Easter. And uh, we welcome you who are visiting with us on uh, television. And uh, we appreciate having you here. I'm Pastor Andy Bow from uh, Zion Church. And uh, to each of you, we uh, pray and wish you a good weekend as we think and remember together. And I'll share a little bit more as we go along in the service today. John is our musician today. Thank you, John, for being here and for sharing a little bit of warm up there for us. I'm going to move back, so sometimes it's a little uh, better for me to be here as far as our sound system is concerned. So. Let us begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us together say amen. Amen. The psalm of the day is number 97. That's in your bulletin. We'll read that responsively. If you can respond with the emboldened sections of Psalm 97. The Lord reigns, let the earth rejoice. Clouds and thick darkness surround the Lord. Righteousness and justice are the foundations of God's throne. Fire goes before the Lord. Burning up enemies on every side. Lightnings light up the world. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax. Before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens declare your righteousness, O Lord and all the people see your glory. Confounded be all who worship graven images and delight in false gods. Bow down before the Lord, all you gods. Zion hears and is glad. The cities of Judah rejoice. For you are the Lord most high over all the earth. You who love the Lord, Hate evil. God guards the lives of the saints and rescues them from the land of the wicked. Light dawns for the righteous and joy for the honest of heart. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous, and give thanks to God's holy name. Amen. And as we worship here this weekend, there are a lot of things on our thoughts and minds, and I'll kind of talk a little bit more about that uh, in the sermon uh, later, but uh, the people of Uvalde, Texas, uh, certainly are on our mind this morning as we gather here, and uh, we hear God's word, and we share in our care and concern for those people there and others who have experienced uh, the traumas of our life. The hymn is <clears throat> number 413, hymn number 413, Holy, Holy, Holy. I'd like to ask you to stand as we sing this hymn. Holy. 
In your bulletin is the prayer of the day that we share with ourselves here as a worshiping congregation and many Christians uh, who are worshiping in around the world this day. Let us join. We pray together. O oh God, form the minds of your faithful people into your one will. Make us love what you command and desire what you promise. That amid all the changes of this world, our hearts may be fixed where true joy is found through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. So this morning, I'm going to ask uh, young people who are here all the way up through eighth graders or whatever, if you would like to come forward, I'd like to have you sit up here, if you will, okay? Could you come and join me up in front? I appreciate that, okay? So you can sit here looking back this way a little bit, okay? That's great. Thank you. I'll move over here. All right, thank you. You can kind of move, well, that's all right. Maybe you can move down as a thing and then you can move over a little bit there. Then, then that'll be better. Okay. Thank you so much for being here this morning. And thank you to your uh, parents or uh, grandparents or friends or whoever it was that helped you come to worship this morning. We are, we are thankful that you are able to be here today. And uh, we are thinking about ourselves as the people of God here at Zion. But this weekend, we are remembering some things that are important to us as individuals at Zion and also to our country. So I brought along this to help us begin children's time today. Okay, this is a flag, okay? And this is the flag of the United States of America. It's a reminder that we are part of the community which is of the United States. And uh, we think about 
today being part of that community, and I'll talk about that a little bit in the sermon, so maybe you can kind of listen to the sermon today also a little bit later, but uh, just to remember that this is uh, our flag for our country. Would you be able to hold that for me while I do that? Thank you, I appreciate that, okay? And um, I, what I'm going to do this morning is I asked my wife Joan to come along, and uh, you can come down if you want to, John, and watch. Yeah, right, I know. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway, uh, just, uh, I, and Joan is, is going to help me this morning, and what we're doing here is thinking of being a member of Zion Congregation and also a member of the United States of America. And we're happy that we can share that, what we call participation in that. And we are remembering today those people who have served our country in the military, that is as soldiers or uh, soldiers is a good word to remember that we've had people serving all the way from way back in the early days of our country up until now. Veterans. Veterans, that's a very good word for that. That's what we're thinking about today. And so I asked Joan to come along and we have two special hats here this morning, okay? Two special hats. And so she's gonna share with one and I'll share with the other one. Okay. Good morning. You can move over a little bit further. Move over. Okay. Good morning. It's Memorial Day weekend. And like the flag there, you probably have seen lots of flags around in your community. And it's a weekend that we remember lots of different things. We remember the people that have died in the wars. And we remember other family people too. At the cemetery, we'll put flowers and special things. My memory of my father, who was in the Navy, started even before I was born, because some of the memories that we have are stories that we hear from other people. So you probably have heard stories about people, and you have lots of memories right now too. Maybe you have a good memory about school last year. And so memories are things that we keep in our mind and they're good memories and there's sometimes difficult ones too. When I, before I was born, I was told the story and it's one of my memories that my father, my mother and my father and my sister that's a year older than me, they were living in Chicago, Illinois, a big city and it was during a war called World War II. And my father, at that time, our country could say, we need you to help our country in this war. And they sent him a letter and they said, you are going to be drafted into the Navy. We want you to come and be trained to be a sailor. So he went and he went to the draft board and he said, my wife is expecting a new baby. What am I going to do? They let him wait another six months until I was born. <laughs> and then he left for two years. I didn't see him at all. And my mom and my sister and I lived with my grandma in Chicago. He served on a special ship that was called the USS Davison. It was from the Wisconsin area, and it was called a destroyer that would go ahead and look for danger in the North Atlantic. And a bigger ship that carried troops of soldiers or cargo supplies and things would follow the destroyer. And he, he didn't talk a lot about his time in the war because it had been some difficulty, but he remembered seeing uh, periscopes coming from submarines from the people that they were fighting against in the war. 
And during one of the storms, big storm in the North Atlantic, the waves were crashing over and he was on duty on, on the ship on the, um, the where the storms were coming. And he was almost washed overboard. While he was thinking he was going to die, his leg was caught on what they called a depth charger. <clears throat> and it hurt his leg to the point that he had to go into the hospital and have some major surgery. <clears throat> the reason I tell you that is that when he would be in church, and he, he was my Sunday school teacher in high school. He was a really good storyteller. And he said, the only thing that I really regret, not that I got injured, not that I was able to serve our country, but now when I go for communion, and at that time, everybody would always kneel at the communion rail. He said, I wish I could kneel at the communion rail. I don't want people to think that I don't want to honor my able to take communion and let God know that I care. And that's a story that I remember. So he was able to be serving his country, serving God, teaching us that it was important to go to church and to learn about God and to help other people. This is his hat that I was able to keep. I have it. It's, if you want to pass it around down, you can see it's old and stained but it has a wonderful memory for me. So I hope some of the things as you grow older too, there'll be memories that you can remember. Thank you, Joan. Uh, Paul Evanson was Joan's dad's name and uh, this is his hat. And uh, so we have just brought that this morning to kind of tie down the thoughts that we have this, this weekend. Um, and I've heard those stories for a long time, and it's, it's, really, it's really interesting. Uh, I brought along a hat this morning, too, and uh, this was my grandfather's hat uh, in the World War II. His name was Andrew Bow, just like my name, because I was named for him. But uh, he became a chaplain during World War II, and uh, this uh, hat helmet uh, has a cross on it here. And uh, he was serving uh, in the Army National Guard. He did not go overseas. He was not killed in action. But he did minister at Clinton uh, Schick Army Hospital in Clinton, Iowa. Uh, to those who were injured and came back uh, during the war. And he was uh, there and retired as a colonel of uh, the National Guard. And so we've had this uh, hat at the cabin that he built where we live now for many, many years. And uh, this is kind of the original style that they started World War II with, but they changed the helmet a little bit. But you can feel how you know, kind of hard that is, and that's to help protect them from injury uh, when they were serving in the Army or the Navy as Joan said. His name was Andrew Bow, and uh, I have a granddaughter who is also Andrea, named after him, AJ, and I think she's watching on television now, so thank you. <laughs> okay, so we can do that. So I'll just put these back here just as a reminder that there are people who have loved the country and served in the military, and we honor those particularly this weekend who lost their lives in service to our country. And uh, we want to say thank you to them and uh, to the people who uh, have also served. And so I'm going to put the Navy hat back up here too, okay, for Paul Evanson and Andrew J. Bolt. So thank you. Let us pray. Lord, bless those who we remember this weekend in all times and in all places, those who serve overseas, particularly those who lost their lives. 
but also those who served. And uh, we uh, ask your continued blessing to be upon the families uh, of those who have served and the veterans, as uh, we mentioned this morning. Thank you for being our God and for calling us to be your people. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So thank you. Thank you for holding that. Okay? So you can go back to your places, if you will. Thank you. The reading today is from Revelation 22, verses 12 through 14, 16, 17, and 20 and 21. Look, I am coming. My reward is with me. I will give to everyone according to what they have done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may go through the gates into the city. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come, and let those who hear say, come. Let those who are thirsty come, and let all who wish to take the free gift of the water of life. He who testifies to these things says, yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with God's people. Amen. Thank you. And John, just before you do that, I just want to call attention. I'll be reading the gospel from John 17 shortly. And uh, many people throughout history have called this Jesus' high priestly prayer that he shared with his disciples at the Last Supper. And uh, so that's uh, Joan is, uh, John, John is singing a uh, sweet hour of prayer as we enter into that time. So I just wanted to say that before you sing, John. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer that calls me from a world of care and bids me at my father
Thank you very much, John. We appreciate that. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, this section of John, the Gospel, that we'll be reading from the 17th chapter of John. And remember that this section of uh, John was probably the last of the Gospels to be written, maybe uh, as much as uh, 50 to 100 years after Matthew, Mark, and Luke, that John, who was the youngest of the disciples and uh, the apostles, uh, wrote that Gospel and it became written down. I think uh, as we honor the reading of the Gospel this morning, I'd like to have you stand as we read the Gospel this morning. We think of Jesus praying with his disciples, um, and uh, it was more of an honor that they were seated, actually, uh, in that time, but uh, we do that by standing, so we'll do that. This is Jesus' prayer. <clears throat> talking about his disciples. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave to me that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory that you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you, and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love that you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. This is the word of the Lord. Be Please be seated. As we start today, I'm going to reference the front of the bulletin, but I also would like for you, if you will, to turn to the announcement page, uh, the last page uh, of the folded portion of the bulletin. If you could do that as we begin this morning here now, uh, there, the announcements page, and uh, that is the last portion there. And uh, we uh, think of, uh, those announcements which we have there. There's one that says, our prayer to use and remember today. And that is the uh, kind of the first of the announcements. I'm going to reference that this morning because I want to ask of you that you think in a, a little different way this morning as we gather here uh, as members of Zion and as uh, in our community and uh, that this prayer is a prayer that I have found for myself. I've talked about it a little bit before, but it's a simple prayer, but I think most meaningful for us to have as we begin anything in our day, but particularly perhaps at the morning of the day. So if you will join with me, uh, it's the section of uh, our prayer to use and remember today, and let us pray together. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of life this day. Please help me and us to love and serve you as you have loved and served all. Amen. Thank you for joining me in, in that prayer this morning. So on the cover of the bulletin, we begin our worship together today and are thankful for hearing God's word. We are thankful for uh, being together as God's people and uh, sharing uh, in this time together in Christ is the bulletin beginning. A little rumbling with the, the <laughs> world around us, which is both natural and created by us as people also. Um, 
What is behind what I'm thinking this morning is a kind of a distillation of the gospel. We have, as the people of God at Zion, a gift to share with the world. And I think at this particular time, it's a really important gift. And it is grounded in this. God loves us. God forgives us and God gives us hope. That's kind of what I distill for the gospel. God's love eternal, God's forgiveness always, and God's hope today and tomorrow. So let's look at the bulletin there on the cover, and uh, today, three parts to that uh, bulletin cover. We remember, we rejoy, and we refocus, and then we're going to sing together. We are one in the Spirit as Jesus prayed for us, and we will share and sing with one another. So today, we began and we shared a remembrance uh, for this weekend. Uh, that Joan and I had an opportunity to share, and maybe that brings memories for you and uh, loved ones and family members and community members and friends that, that we think about. And so that is a part of that remember. But also, we are thinking of ourselves as members of Zion Lutheran Church. And uh, what does that mean for us, and what is that gift that we can share? Well, if you remember also at the Last Supper, and, and next Sunday will be Pentecost Sunday, we'll be sharing uh, the gift of the Holy Spirit and celebrating that gift of the Holy Spirit. Part of that next Sunday celebration will be Holy Communion. And at that Last Supper time, when Jesus met with his disciples, which was called uh, the Passover at that time, and now, 50 days after Easter, we call it Pentecost, the 50th day, more or less, after Easter. We remember that Jesus said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this to remember me. And then it says in our words, introducing communion, it says, after supper, Jesus took the cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. That is an important remembrance uh, for me and I hope for you as a congregation that, that Jesus looked forward remembering his own life, death, and resurrection and says, this now is a new covenant in your midst. The old is important and we remember and think and we read the Psalm from uh, the Old Testament today and uh, we have the Old Testament scriptures which are favorites in our life and that's really important as it has led up. But I think it is also important to remember that Jesus started something new in our life and in our world to the people who are the people of faith. So today, we are remembering that we are members of Zion community, and we have those gifts to share with one another that we might support and be with one another. We remember those who have gone before us in faith, and sometimes on this weekend uh, of Memorial Day weekend, we also think of and remember those people who have gone before us in faith. And that's a good thing too. So when you visit the cemetery, perhaps uh, tomorrow, a celebration for remembering those who have died uh, uh, in the service of our country, we also think of those who have died, if you will, in the service of being the people of God here at Zion Congregation. So we remember them, and Jesus has given us a new covenant and asked us 
to be one as he himself was one with God and God has spoken through oh. <laughs> God has spoken. <laughs> okay. That's interesting, yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it, this, is just, this is just an aside on that. I, I cannot imagine uh, what it's like in the cities of Ukraine these days, okay? I mean, to have that as a, as a bomb going off in, in the background. And, and that is a, a very, I mean, I think about that and I, and I pray for, for those people too, that, uh, you know, I, I can't imagine if shelling in the Twin Cities or in Menominee or in uh, Eau Claire or whatever, but, but that's, a, that's a difficult thing and we need to pray for peace and uh, that, that something can change that and that, that just, it comes to my mind when we hear that sound. So we remember the gift that Jesus asks us to participate in is that gift of giving ourselves in love, giving ourselves in forgiveness, giving ourselves in the focus on the gift that Jesus brought to us. And that was not an easy gift for him to, to come and to give us. So we are members and we are singing shortly. We are one in the spirit as Jesus prayed. The second part is we talked about being, and I purposely put down rejoy here instead of rejoiced <laughs> because I'm thinking that it is really difficult sometimes in our lives and each of us may bring here today a thought that I don't have joy because maybe I have lost a loved one, or maybe my job is in jeopardy, or maybe uh, I'm not relating as well as I would like to to family members or to the community or something else. We lose our joy. Uh, I just had a, to bring this because uh, um, I like to read Snoopy as well as the scripture. But um, this is one that I've seen before and I, and I thought about it. And it's baseball season. And uh, baseball is the season we're in right now. And uh, Charlie Brown is the pitcher. And uh, of course he is always having difficulties and very seldom wins when he's pitching. So this is the cartoon and he's winding up and he's on the mound and he's getting ready to pitch and he's thinking about the scripture and he says, thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night nor of the pestilence that walketh in darkness. And he throws the ball, pitches the ball and the next frame shows pow, and the ball is hit directly back at him on the mound, knocks him over, knocks his hat off, knocks his glove off, knocks his shoes off, and he's laying on the ground, and he says, but those line drives will kill you. <laughs> okay, and so uh, I think, you know, uh, we, our joy is taken away by many things. And you can put that in your mind and, and thought today. And um, I don't know what it is for you. For me, I, I mentioned just thinking about people in that war situation and, and how difficult that is to hear and think about uh, with, with that and uh, looking at the, the people who have celebrated here. Um, so, Whatever your joy is that you have lost, um, we ask you to help rejoy one another and to help you rejoy the people who are around you uh, here at Zion and in our community as Jesus asked his disciples.
who followed him to become those who went out to share the joy and the hope of the resurrection, okay? That is a gift that we can give to the world, to change the world. But we have to ask for God's guidance to do that, and we have to ask one another to maybe put aside sometimes our own understanding of what's going on and listen to that which God brings into our understanding that we might have joy together and work together in order to bring the peace and hope that we can have as the members of Christ. So the third part of that then is that we refocus. When my father died uh, back in 1990, we planted a tree uh, just off from the house where, where we live, and uh, a maple tree, and it grew up beautifully. And uh, we, we celebrated and thought about my dad's life and death. And he was an important person to, to me and to our family. And one year when we came out, it had died on the top. I don't know exactly what happened, but it was probably 20 feet high almost. And uh, some reason or other, the, the branch going up died. And I thought, oh my gosh, that's kind of remembering my dad, I guess, that who had died. So I thought, well, maybe we should cut it down and start over again. And we said, no, we'll leave it up for a year or two anyway and see what happens. What happened was that one of the branches below that one that died took off this way and went back up and took over and was reaching up and is live and well. <laughs> and I thought, you know, that kind of refocused that that, that which was lost uh, was brought back in by another branch that went up. And I think about refocusing our lives in order, and that's why I shared the prayer, in order that we may listen to God's direction for us and not just try to be whatever I think it should be, but what God thinks it should be for me and for our lives as members of Zion Church. Uh, and maybe we need to refocus as we grow up and uh, think uh, about how can we go ahead as a community of God's people here at Zion, as a part of our country, and can we listen to one another and work with one another, as we will sing shortly, uh, in order that we may bring God's hope into each person's life and that we may be rejoyed in our experience. So thank you. Thank you for praying that prayer. Maybe you want to take your bulletin home this morning and make that prayer a part of your life that I, that I shared with you. Uh, maybe we can think, how are there ways that we can work together as the people of God to bring God's love to each person, to bring God's uh, forgiveness to each person and to bring God's refocus and hope. So thank you for being part of Zion. And as we move forward, we ask that we may be God's people, focusing on what God asks us to be. Amen. So John, I see you were getting ready there a little bit before, so thank you for that. Uh, in your bulletin is uh, are the words for uh, we are one in the spirit, and uh, that's an important song, and uh, it, it comes from what we, what we read in the scripture. Thank you. We are one in the spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one.
each other we will walk hand in hand we will walk with each other we will walk hand in hand and together we'll spread the news that god is in our land and they'll know we are christians by our love by our love yes they'll know we are christians by our love we will work with each other we will work side by side we will work with each other we will work side by side and we'll guard each man's dignity and save each man's pride and they'll know we are christians by our love by our love yes they'll know we are christians by our love All praise to the Father from whom all things come and all praise to Christ Jesus his only son and all praise to the Spirit who makes us one and they'll know we are Christians by our love by our love yes they'll know Thank you much, and we will be singing that hymn again uh, next week for Pentecost, so please join us for Pentecost and, and join together with that. In your bulletin there is the Apostles' Creed, and I'd like to have you just remain seated as we share in the Apostles' Creed uh, the, the disciples and the apostles. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <clears throat> Lord, thank you for this day that we may share together in worship. We ask that you would bless each person here as we gather in worship today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask that you would bless and be with those in our congregation who have lost joy in their life through the loss of family members or friends. We think of those uh, who we honor today and tomorrow and remember uh, who have served our country. And we ask that your presence may bring us joy and hope with one another. Lord, in your mercy. In our prayer. And Lord, we thank you uh, that you provide for us care uh, for body, mind, and spirit. And we ask that as members of this congregation, we may be those people who bring care to one another in body, mind, and spirit. Lord, in your mercy. So thank you for calling us to be your people. Thank you for promising always to be with us in your love and in your forgiveness and in your hope. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. So this morning, I just want to call your attention uh, to a couple of things. Uh, following the service this morning, there is coffee in the fellowship hall and a celebration for birthday. And uh, so we appreciate that, uh, that we can do that. I'd also like to uh, share that uh, Janet Lund from our congregation, her son Alan died this week, and uh, we are uh, thinking of her and uh, her family and the funeral arrangements uh, are pending uh, for that, uh, for uh, Janet and her family. So 
our thoughts and prayers are, are with them. And then I invited you to Pentecost next Sunday. I think it's a good thing that we can gather together. Uh, if you want to, please come and wear red and uh, celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit as it comes into our lives uh, in our thing. So this is the uh, announcements for this morning and uh, we'll continue as we receive our offering. Pastor, I've got, I got an announcement that didn't get in the bulletin. Uh, apparently we failed to do that. The uh, Memorial Day services We'll go on. Um, we're at uh, South Side at 920, Sunset at 940, out at Emmanuel at 10 o'clock, and uh, up at Lone Pine at 1030, which is supposed to be the program, according, you know, depending on the weather. And if it's uh, weather not permitting, the program will be held at the Viking Middle School Gym. So the program will go on regardless of, of the weather. So. Thank you, John. I was thinking then, and uh, we appreciate that you share that with us and, uh, and the invitation and your singing. So we'll share with the offering. You may better get in the right key, John. Thank you. you may ask me how my Lord is real. You may doubt the things I say and doubt the way I feel. But I know He's real today. He'll always be. I can feel His hand in my that's good enough for me. I will never walk alone. He holds my hand. He will guide each step I take. And if I fall, I know he'll understand. Till the day he tells me why he loves me so. I can feel his hand in mine, that's all I need to know. As we receive the offering, uh, will you please note that the hymn is number 685, Take My Life, and the verses are 1, 2, 3, and 6, if you will. And John will lead us in that. It is a commitment song in terms of our membership at Zion and in our life with Christ. One, two, three, and six. Thank you. Thank you. They were singing this song before uh the service for Lucille Friday, and I wish she was here to, uh, to lead you. That woman did a great job. Take my life that I may be. Will you please stand? Take my life that I might be consecrated. my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Take my voice and let me sing always in the for my King. Take my lips and let them be filled with
thanks to each one of you for being here this morning. John, thank you for leading us in our music and singing, which is so important for us as we do that. Let's join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. We'll use the traditional version. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The, fall, the final hymn is number 890 and picks up uh, that sense of remembering those who've gone before us in service to our country uh, way back to a time right after the Civil War. Hymn number 890. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Jesus gave it to me. I'm gonna let it shine. Gave it to me, I'm gonna let it shine. Jesus gave it to me, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. All around the neighborhood, I'm gonna let it shine. All around the neighborhood, 
Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. 